Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Gloria Rubin. So excited to be a part of the Earth Day 2021 virtual stage with Earth Day Initiative and March for Science New York City. I am an actress, a singer, an author, and president of the global nonprofit that is solely focused on clean water, Waterkeeper Alliance. And I am really excited to introduce to you a real champion in the fight for clean water, the executive director of Waterkeeper Alliance, Mr. Mark Iaghi. Hello, Hi, Gloria. Hi, Mark. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm great. Happy to be here and happy to be celebrating Earth Day, which we know every day is Earth Day. Yes, yes, indeed. Earth Day is, oh my goodness, it's like, especially nowadays, you know, it's a true celebration of the planet and all of the magic and wonder that it offers us so generously and so how we have to protect it, as we all know. So um, we'd love to, you know, talk a little bit of course about waterkeeper alliance and for those who may not be familiar with waterkeeper alliance would you just kind of let everybody know who we are what we do absolutely so uh, we're a global movement united for clean healthy and abundant water for all people in life and really on a mission to protect our right to clean water in communities around the world uh, we have a so we're a network of waterkeeper groups and these waterkeeper groups are local community-based organizations that um, are grassroots warriors they arrange cleanups they educate the public uh, they patrol they patrol waterways and they take on polluters both in court and in the press and they're really uh, they're, they're now 350 of these waterkeeper groups in uh 45 countries more than 45 countries around the world i think it's 48 right now and together these women and men are out there every day patrolling and protecting almost three million square miles of of waterways and you know i think gloria the easiest thing for me to say is when someone asks me what a water keeper does i tell them that you know water keeper is a warrior it's a woman or a man who gets up every every day and fights for a world where you know everyone can go down to their local waterway jump in and have a swim without fear of getting sick yeah. or get a glass of water and drink it without fear of ingesting toxic chemicals okay. or catch a fish and feed it to their family like you used to without having to worry that there might be mercury or pcbs in there that are going to poison your family mm -hmm. that's what we're all about um out there locally being um being out on the water and protecting the community's right to clean water see i love that that's one of the things that i love so much about waterkeeper alliance mark is what you just explained you know it's just literally literally Every day, people that are in their communities fighting. And I love the bringing polluters to justice thing. Do you know, I'm like, you pollute the waterways, the waterkeeper will find you and <laughs> we will take you to court and we're going to win. <laughs> so, Absolutely. so that whole participation in the community and the whole, I love it. It's literally clean water warriors, as you said, warriors for sure. So, um, yeah, I and mean, you know, we're, we're grounded in basically clean, in citizen action, science, and law as you mentioned you know and, and enforcing the law against those polluters exactly yeah that's a perfect combination so what would you say in today's times are the biggest threats to clean water well as you know that's there are myriad answers to that question but you know we have a we have a water crisis and we have a climate crisis mm -hmm. and the two are very much intertwined. Mm -hmm. So think about it for a, a second. If I, if, if, if I say climate change to you, what are the first things that come to mind? Well, for me, I think of two things, particularly for water. I think of either way too much water or like floods and hurricanes, et cetera, or yeah. deluges of rainstorms that hover over cities for days or not enough water rivers drying up, lakes drying up, uh, aquifers, dry, um, aqua, what is it? Aquifers. Yeah. Sorry, it's a little early for me. Yeah, exactly. So too much or not enough, the, the yeah. extremes. Exactly. So I think when, when you do ask the average person, when they think about climate change, it's going to be like you're saying, uh, extreme weather events, hurricanes, drought, yeah. flooding, sea level rise, and you know, for the real ocean, uh, ocean folks out there, ocean acidification, any of those things, but they're all water, right? Everything that you hear that we just spoke about, is, spoke about is water. So climate change is altering the chemistry of our oceans, mm -hmm. you know, the character of our coastlines, and the timing and intensity of rain and snow, as you mentioned, and it's wreaking havoc around the world. And we know that 
you know, water is our most precious, precious natural resource. It's, you know, no part of our lives is unaffected by water. We drink it or we die. We bathe in it. We wash with it. Um, without water, we can't grow crops. And think about all the food we harvest from rivers and oceans. Um, it's just, in, even in all of its forms, whether it's rain, sleet, or snow, water is crucial to our atmosphere, to the air we breathe. So it is, there is nothing more important. There's no, it's not a coincidence that we call this place where we live the blue planet. Yes. Um, and so that, you know, climate change is affecting, climate change is, is exacerbating the, the water crisis. You know, we have um, about half the world's population is experiencing severe water scarcity at least one month out of the year. About two, more than 2 billion people um, live without safe water at home. And, you know, pre-COVID times, I haven't, I don't know what the, how the, what the numbers look like during COVID, but hopefully we'll be on, we'll be BC beyond COVID soon. Huh. And, um, but I know that the, the data before COVID was that roughly half the world's hospital beds were filled with someone with a waterborne illness. And so all of these challenges that we're facing, it's, you know, rising sea levels, they're putting people's homes and livelihood at risk. Um, we have a group, we have groups in Senegal who tell us that the common refrain there is the sea ate it, which mm -hmm. means that when a house is no longer there, it's because the sea came and took it away, the sea ate it. Mm -hmm. um, Similarly, our water keepers in Louisiana have seen government remove more than 40 names of places off of maps because those places no longer exist. Um, except for in the memories of the, you know, the coastal residents who saw that land disappear. Right. So I'd say, you know, climate change is having a dramatic effect on what was already a water crisis. And, you know, we could go on and on, but that's, you know, probably don't want to give everybody doom and gloom all day on our day. No, 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 exactly. No, there are certainly solutions. Like that being said, actually, you know, if there's some uh, examples of some tangible ways that our global water keepers have been protecting their waterways or fighting for clean water as these changes happen. Yeah, well that, and, and that exactly that's what we're all about, right? Is the tangible changes. And, and at Waterkeeper Alliance, we believe that highly trained, effective local leaders are critical to solving the water crisis, the climate crisis. And um, it's because we know that change happens at the local level. That's where change starts. And so, we work to be um, community-based and globally impactful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, around the world, decisions are made at the local level on things like energy sources, transportation options, land use, zoning. Those are made at the local level. And so as a result, we can get things done locally. And, um, and actually, I'll, I'll give some examples of solutions, but, but why local is so important is really important to establish too, I think, and just that, local actions can also be tailored to the people and the culture of the community. And that makes it more of a shared decision in, in being part of a solution rather than just some top down imposition. And it makes easier, it makes it easier to hold those local decision makers accountable too. And I think we've all learned very well that we can't just count on DC or wherever your capital is to come in and save the day. We got to take action locally. Um, and that's where those examples um, of how our water keepers are working to uh, affect change and have tangible change come into play. Um, we talked about, mentioned Senegal briefly with sea level rise. Our Han Bay keeper in Senegal has mobilized the community there to stop two planned coal fire power plants, which would have had devastating climactic effects. Um, and they also were successful in getting the government and, and and some European development banks to commit $68 million to clean up their water, their beach as well, um, which is really exciting. Um, we can shift over to India. We've got a Yam, uh, we've got a water keeper on the Yamuna River there who she worked with local women to restore a first order tributary of the Holy Ganges River. And this is a waterway that had been dry for 75 years. And they were able to restore this waterway. It started um, revitalizing natural springs that the community relies on. And it also having that source of water now has been stopping some of the devastating fires that have been plaguing the community. Um, so there's a couple examples outside the United States. We go in the United States, um, in the Pacific Northwest, we've got, uh, really big success from our Columbia Riverkeeper and their partners. They launched the Power Pass Coal Coalition and they have used um, 
grassroots organizing techniques and legal strategies to stop every single uh, fossil fuel export terminal that's been proposed in the Pacific Northwest. And so not only were the waterways and the communities spared from the pollution and climate impact, but all that coal that would have been shipped to China was uh, to be burned or other parts of Asia to be burned was stopped in its tracks. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's, there, there are so many, there are so many, you know. Exactly. I know we have like over 350 examples of <laughs> these warriors in the communities are making these kinds of tangible changes. It's, act, it's so extraordinary because like you say, you know, particularly coal, Senegal or in the Pacific Northwest, obviously fossil fuel burning is a major has an influence or an, an influence, a major impact on climate change. That's like a no brainer to even say that, but it's, it's the, collaborating with the you know having the community get involved like you say having raising these issues and fighting these issues that are most important to that community community based but globally impactful like you just said because the impact of coal is exacerbating all of the things that we've been talking about so right. on that note of of you know of these results of these tangible solutions how can people who are watching today how can they participate and get involved with the solutions and how do you know what i mean and what can they do to be part of the solution yeah and absolutely and we we need everybody to be part of the solution because it's okay. going to take more than just our 350 groups we all need to be invested in the solution and all need to understand that the biggest threat we face too you know one of the other biggest threats we face is, is apathy and inertia that we have to we have to be able to stand up and speak out for places we love and places that mean so much to us and so I would say two things that um, I would suggest people do. One is go to waterkeeper.org and sign up for our email distribution so we can keep you apprised of key water issues and give you opportunities to make your voice heard. But then we want you to make an impact locally, right, in your community. So we talked about how change happens at the local level. So number two, on our website, you can find your local waterkeeper and you can support their grassroots efforts to protect water in your community. Um, you can sign up for their newsletter or you can follow them on social media or you can make a donation. And I would say, you know, depending on the, the waterkeeper group and what's happening in their community at the, and what time of year it is, you might be able to participate in a cleanup. You might be able to learn about native plantings. You might be able to help take out invasive species. You might learn how to take water samples or you might be able to attend and speak at a hearing about some potentially polluting project and help make your voice heard in stopping it. Yeah, perfect. I mean, that's such the best combination to be able to support financially, no matter the amount and and also the option to get on the ground with your local water keeper, one close by or learn how to become one or what have you, and just literally get your hands on the ground in the water by the river by the lake and, you know, start cleaning up and start learning about what's happening. It's, it's amazing. And well, and I love the website because at the same time, you know, you can see what's happening around the world and the wins and the challenges that are, that are going on all across this globe. It's such an extraordinary thing. Waterkeeper Alliance is like rocks. <laughs> Waterkeeper Alliance rocks. Mark Yagi, Executive Director of Waterkeeper Alliance. I have to say, I've known you for many years now and your leadership and your commitment and your dedication in the fight for clean water around the globe is unlike anyone I know. And just, I have to thank you from that on a personal level and from a humanity level. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's very kind of you and thank you. We're so grateful to have you on the team to be our president. And as, and as you know, how incredibly inspiring it is to see these local groups take on huge challenges and create change. And, that's why we hope all the, all the members of the audience will join in. And you made a really good point as at closing out there is if you don't have a water keeper in your local community, call us and let's get going. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, thank you, Gwen. Yes, everybody, please visit waterkeeper.org. And thanks again for joining us. And it's really, it's been a lot of fun. Again, Earth Day 2021 virtual stage with Earth Day Initiative and March for Science New York City. Protect your waterways, protect your earth, Waterkeeper Alliance and um, peace out. <laughs>